right now with where you're at. <laughs> Man. Damn, what is he what what has happened for you? <laughs> uh, okay. not much. But... Okay. Hello oh, and welcome back to <laughs> Real Horror Show. I am your host, Real, and I'm joined as always by Horror I'm... Show. Yeah, this is Horror Show, and that's real. Hey don't make fun of us because of our names we just yeah. can't change that about ourselves so that's not cool to make fun of us for something we can't change listen yeah. i won't i won't always be bitchy to someone sliding into our dms asking us to shill their fast fashion quote-unquote goth jewelry but at <laughs> least have your um minions read down a line because in our bio it has our real names mm-hmm. yeah well, my real name, your pen name, but whatever. Right. Yeah, it's S- whatever. semantics, same thing. It still works for me instead of real black heart. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Fuck. real. So confident too. Yeah, seriously. Makes me even more mad. But anyway, uh, this is a mini show where usually we talk about vampire diaries, but oh. I've been I've been cheated on. I've been betrayed. Sam doesn't really deserve this and it sucks because I wasn't even I didn't even realize I was doing it. It was like I was possessed by a demon and the demon was like, mm, more vampire diaries. And so I just accidentally watched an entire season ahead of her. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Storm Storm has been cheating on me. And there's really no excuse other than I just didn't stop watching. So Sam has watched episode 11, season five. Yes. I have watched episode 11, season six. So yeah. <laughs> just so I'm going to pretend to be excited and surprised about all the stuff that's happened, but I don't remember what it was. <laughs> um, well, I can catch you up with what I vaguely remember because I started it before we did Fear Street. So it's been okay, a while. Cool. Um, okay. Basically in season five, Elena and Caroline are in college mm-hmm. and um, shit, shit, what's her name? Oh God. <laughs> Bonnie? Bonnie, Bonnie is dead. Oh God. But Bonnie does come back. Um, there's all the drama with um, Silas and Catherine and Silas's first love. Oh, Why yeah. do I feel like we've talked about all this? Maybe I was supposed to have finished season five. Maybe I'm the fuck up. Wait, maybe. Because I know, I remember we did talk about Silas because it's basically Stefan. Because <laughs> it's a Stefan doppelganger. But, Are you um, typing while you speak? No, not at all. I'm not I, doing anything. I at can all. hear you. Mm. All right. How about that? How about now? Are you multitasking during our special time of the week? I'm not taking attendance from today's class at all. <laughs> <laughs> why? 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 Which means yes, they were there. <laughs> Um, so maybe I'm the fuck up because I just got to the episode where Klaus and Caroline finally hook up. Oh, like, really? Yeah, like Jesus Christ, that took forever. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah, I'm like way ahead, but uh, yeah. well, I will try and catch up to you. Hell, it, it'll man. be hard because I'm gonna be in, Ho- uh, in Ohio for the premiere of my very first play, oh, and yeah, girl. I'm very, I'm excited, but in that stressed kind of way yeah which is weird because I have been published before not to brag but Mm -hmm. I have had pieces published but I think the feeling of writing a play in which people are supposed to watch yeah is a very different feeling than just oh here's my poem on this website you can pretend to read right yeah 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 which I feel like that sounds like I'm directly targeting you I'm just speaking for all writers in general like yeah that's that's how it is man yeah absolutely you have no real way of knowing how many people are actually reading yeah your publication exactly but for me I'm actually going to be there on Saturday so I'm going to see all the seats filled and I'm going to hear live reactions and (laughs) be all around me 
It's going to be really cool. Like, do they know? They won't even know you're there, will they? Unless so, they say, Sir, there, there's Sam, there she is. Yeah, hey, Sam, so stand they, up. <laughs> they will know because the theater knows. And also I made a adorable little mask. Um, I just oh, got I some, I got some iron on letters and it just says, I write play. Nice. <laughs> I was originally going to do, I am playwright, but I did not have. It's too many letters. Yeah. I like, yeah. I write play better. <laughs> yeah. Because Sweet. the goal is you just want to write with slightly bad grammar so people yes. don't ask you for advice or want to collaborate right. with you. Yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Just weaponized incompetence. Yeah, that's that's a great piece of wisdom. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, Vampire Diaries, Where I Am, is great. Uh, Damon and Elena have broken up. Catherine is oh, dying. Yeah. Oh, um, God, yeah. Some scientist is making vampires that eat other vampires. It's just a wild ride. And hopefully by the next mini show, I will have caught up to Stormy and we can have a real discussion. It's crazy. Sorry. It's crazy to hear about all the stuff that is happening right now, because when you get to where I'm at, things are just so different that you're also going to forget everything that is happening right now. <laughs> things move. Things are moving really fast. They're really moving fast. Yeah, and that's a really interesting thing looking back on from where we are now in the golden age of television is yeah. just how tight stories are now compared to what they were like seven years ago when Vampire Diaries was putting out new episodes. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> it is crazy, I'm trying to think man. of a good example. Like even Better Call Saul, which is a network TV show. That's oh. the only one I'm watching other live that has a very tight concise storyline it's six seasons but everything flows together you don't have like a million plot threads right going yeah on. there's a lot happening right now in vampire diaries with the yeah. plot threads and with better call Saul, it's just like leading up to because it's the prequel series to breaking bad it's leading up to him becoming the lawyer we know in breaking bad yeah yeah interesting I've never watched either of those shows. I'm sorry. I know it's, they're really cool. It's fine. I like Better Call Saul better than Breaking Bad. Oh, nice. Just because Bob Odenkirk is... Brian Cranston's great too, but Bob Odenkirk is just very good. Excellent. And he is... The name is Saul. Yes. And he is a lawyer. Yes. And that's the plot. Excellent. <laughs> that's job. all I really need. <laughs> yeah. um, so... I guess let's uh, talk about the movie we, we will be discussing next week on October 14th. Yeah, and that is going to be a Nightmare on Elm Street movie, am I right? Yes, it is going to be yeah. the gayest horror movie ever made, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, uh, Freddy's oh, Revenge. Yeah. It's only taken us three years of this podcast to get to Nightmare on Elm Street 2. But, I know. Uh, we are doing that one because we will be having some very special guests. Yeah. Uh, my real life friend, not that Stormy is not a real life friend, my real life <laughs> friend, uh, David, not my boyfriend, David, David Delara, he started um, a podcast with one of his friends called Strawberry Boys. And I thought we would have them on for a gay old time. <laughs> yeah dude that would be so cool um and uh i look forward to watching nightmare 2 on hbo max which that's where it is so i yep. have that so i can do that it is on hbo max and peacock uh yes it is it is on peacock as well i do not have a premium subscription to that but i do have a subscription hbo max which is yeah. online which is okay yeah <laughs> Um, so I'm looking, that'll be a fun discussion because while there are horror movies that have been made in the last few years intended for a queer audience with a queer cast, um, I don't think we'd have any of those without the legacy Nightmare on Elm Street 2 left us. Yes. I, so I, 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 yeah. I laugh, but it was actually a very horrible experience for the lead actor in that movie, but... For me, the best revenge against homophobes is now they have the legacy of working on the gayest horror movie ever made. Yeah, so it looks like 
Mark Patton, who played Jesse Walsh, was the main character. And um, he was the one that had a bad experience, you said? Yeah. What happened on set for those of us, including myself, that <laughs> do not really? Yeah, we'll, we'll go much. more into it uh, in the yeah, review because, uh, <laughs> yeah, David Delara said he's going to do a lot of research. Oh, but cool. um, Just very briefly then, a quick yeah, just thing. very briefly uh he's he's been openly gay most of his life and he was openly gay during the production of um nightmare 2 and uh-huh. so he received a lot of harassment on set i see during the okay. production he has a documentary uh scream queen my nightmare yes yeah dude yeah and uh, that is so cool because that's on my watch list and a lot of people say that that is w- like one of the best um documentaries that kind of showcase lgbt community and horror yeah and uh, it, yeah so yeah. awesome and that i'm so is, glad you brought that up yeah <laughs> that is available on amazon prime oh yeah i think i put it on my to watch list let me make sure it's there because whenever i did that slasher conference thing so many people discussed that documentary Mm -hmm. um and I was like shit I have not seen that so that that's like a piece of um you know a slasher archival you know scholarship (laughs) yeah so that'll be a fun episode it will be our 69th oh my god (laughs) really how fun (laughs) so everything it's like fate man it's totally like lining up like totally it's a green queen my nightmare on elm street okay cool write that down uh so you don't want to miss that fun time like yeah screen queen sorry <laughs> on um, ft amazon thanks amazon okay <laughs> anyone else out there like forget that they have videos through amazon prime because i'm always forgetting what do you mean videos? Like when you have an Amazon Prime membership, it's not just the two day shipping. You also have Prime Video. And oh, I, yeah. I constantly forget. Um, <laughs> yeah, this, this is whole not other my, yeah, it's not my subscription. It's somebody else's. But yeah, I feel like a lot of people forget that. They're just like, yeah, I get just get free shipping and that's it. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, there's prime exclusive movies and shows I should watch so I can be hip with the times yeah exactly um but yeah that's my last comment for the night oh yeah actually no it's not we were we were reviewed on the pick me podcast yeah that was interesting to see I wasn't sure what was happening there I was like oh cool we're getting we're getting at at sign here (laughs) yeah neither was I it's a um very weird yeah thing to experience I listened to it okay um it was it was a favorable review um nice it's it's still it's still just weird (laughs) yeah it's a little strange Um, we were reviewed um with our friends from drinking and screaming Kelly and Char yeah um which is weird that he reviewed both of us in the same episode, but he didn't review the episode we did with them. Oh, you know what? I really thought they did, but I, yeah. What episode did they review that was ours? Uh, he reviewed uh, Jennifer's Body, that episode. Oh, okay. Well, that's that's a pretty good one. That's pretty recent. Yeah, yeah cool. I mean, I can understand why he didn't want to listen to the one we did with Kelly and Char where we review Halloween Kills since not everybody has gotten to see it yet. Ah, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to spoil it. <laughs> yeah, because that one is basically us trying. It's filled with spoilers, I'll tell you. <laughs> mm-hmm. So uh, if you listen to us and don't listen to him, I guess you can go check out that episode. <laughs> Hell Yeah. But that's awesome. all I have this week. Do you have any special announcements? No, all I have to say is I um, have not seen, like, as much as I love Freddy Krueger, he's one of my favorites. I have not really seen all of the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, man. <gasps> I know. I've obviously I've seen, like, the original, and then I've seen Dream Warriors, like, a million times for some mm-hmm. reason, 
I feel like one of my like middle school friends had that DVD and like, you know how you just randomly right. have one out of all this. Yeah. yeah. So it was that I only one. ever had the first one in Wes Craven's new nightmare. Oh, really? Yeah. And then I saw new nightmare. I think with, because you and I re- reviewed that, like that was the first one we mm-hmm. reviewed and then literally like Freddy versus Jason, man. And that's it. Yeah, I think I feel pretty confident in them not having to watch the first one to enjoy Nightmare 2 because it does, I think it's a lot more disconnected from the series than the other ones. The same way a lot of horror movie sequels from that era Mm -hmm. are weirdly disconnected. Again, I should save this for the episode. I'll bring it back up because who actually listens to the mini show? Um. (laughs) You should listen to the mini show, you guys. It's so fun and filled with silly antics <laughs> um robert england was originally not called back to play freddie in the sequel are you serious yeah because they didn't realize that freddie krueger is not just another masked killer you need that personality so nice. in the opening shot of nightmare 2 that is not robert england playing freddie really yeah and, and it will be um... painfully obvious Will it? I was going to say it probably shows then, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> God. Does he come back immediately after that? And hopefully yeah. That yeah. They, they realize <laughs> they realize pretty fast that, uh, oh, yeah, like, oh, shit. This, this role is Robert Engl- England. Yeah. I mean, like, listen, there's no one like him. It's the voice. It's the look. Yeah. And the personality. So, mm-hmm. man. But um i will leave it at that for this week i want to keep this short because i'm leaving yeah. tomorrow yes yeah, sam is leaving tomorrow for the play and that is so super cool i've been keeping up with mad lab updating um and doing the every day they're like introducing a character that's very cool and i know um, they're also cute i'm gonna smush their faces whether they like I, it or not i know that's <laughs> so cool i'm so excited for you man um i'm sorry i can't be there again but i will be with you in spirit yeah as as horror show and you're real (laughs) you're the you're the horror show to my real (laughs) wait can we please like just for a week change our names on twitter to like (laughs) Ooh, let's let's do it it'll be fun it'll be funny yeah. All right, man. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to let you go. I'm not going to watch any more Vampire Diaries because I'm like way too far ahead right now. Yeah, watch Squid Game instead. Yeah, I'm just going to take a chill and I'll watch Squid Game, like Sam said, and I'll watch the Scream Queens thing and I'll watch Nightmare 2 and I'll watch all the stuff I'm supposed to be watching and I won't divert from yeah. the plan because that's what I've been doing. Yeah. Oh, but speaking of Vampire Diaries, I was watching yes. another show because I'm on vacation this week called nice. Sweet Magnolias on oh. Netflix and talk about a show written by people who never lived in the South and instead of like painting us at red, you know, when people don't live in the South, yeah. but write about the South, it's one or two things. We're all either backwoods rednecks or yeah. it's over romanticized. And this see. is the over romanticized version. And oh. I have a lot of thoughts on some aspects of Sweet Magnolias, mainly pertaining to the Black women in that show. Okay. And I would like, I probably should have this conversation with um, Black TV critics because it really bothers me. And it makes me feel like a terrible person because I have a hard time differentiating the three Black women on the show, not because they look the same, but because they all have the exact same haircut I see. And it's a short, they're all short, super short bobs. Yeah. And I'm looking at pictures. It's, yeah, it's making me think of um, some criticism TV and movies have gotten in the past couple of years about how they don't hire makeup artists and hairstylists who know how to do black hair and makeup. I see. And I'm wondering if that's the case with this show. Right. It could be. Yeah, I see her hair short. And it's like, why can't you have diversity with these three women and how their hairs are styled? I know. Why can't you? It's just very interesting because the first couple of episodes, I thought the main black friend in the group, um, she just happened to also be a newspaper reporter, a lawyer and a preacher. Like, (laughs) but no, it's, they're three different actresses 
who just were all given the same haircut by Damn. production and it's just it's it's interesting it's very yeah. interesting and uh just other like cultural things that I kind of find hard to believe like it's a very idealistic view where there's no race issues in this small South Carolina town. I see. And there was one episode that I thought was completely ridiculous that ended with the white <laughs> chef, the white chef telling the 60 year old black man how to properly cook catfish with spices. And I'm like, oh, this seems fake. <laughs> It, yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with that because, the, yeah, there's no need to kind of pull that, that stunt, you know. Yeah. But it was, it was just the kind of fluffy show I want to have on in the background while I'm doing other stuff. Yeah, how south is this? Where it are they is, supposed to be? It's a small South Carolina town. It is South Carolina, okay. So, you know, um, South Carolina, totally the... Uh, picturesque place of uh, the civil rights movement and all of that. Totally no more racial tension down there. I know, right? Yeah, geez. Um, and like, uh, how Cajun are we getting here with the culture if we're talking about cooking catfish and things like that? Because, yeah. I don't know. But that's what I've been doing this week. Yeah. Okay, cool. How sweet Magnolia is. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, right. But anyway, uh, watch Squid Games. That's actually a good show. And I will talk to you on Thursday. Yeah, dude, I will talk to you on Thursday. Safe travels. I will be watching your Instagram. Yeah. And congratulations and break a leg. Sam. Thank you. You're welcome, my friend. All right, listeners, see you next time. Watch Nightmare 2. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.